like this. So the way I would be taking the approach that I would take up for your batch is we would start off with statistical modeling. We right. we'll start off with statistics, right? Statistics right. and econometrics that we require for developing the models. So I'll right. not first go into the data side first. So we'll take right. up some data sets and we'll see how number one, what the statistical methods are, where are they used, how is it that they give us an insight about the data, and how is it that these things would help us uh, going forward, right? So we will start off with statistics like that. So, my, so our objective over here would be to, to first work with the statistical models, right? And I would incorporate a few more models. So I have till logistic, we used to initially do till logistic regression. This time I plan to incorporate beta regression, uh, survival analysis to some extent, so that you know you can kind of work with so so that you guys get familiar with statistical techniques. So once we are out fine with the statistical methods, from there we'll move to the data, right? And we'll start off with the regulatory model developments. So we'll start off with Basel, right? We'll talk about the upstream and the downstream process that Basel has, right? The Basel inputs have, how is capital computed under Basel and everything. So all those methods and how is it that the PDEAD, LGD enters into them, Right? How is how are those PDLGD EAD models developed? So that is something that I will be discussing. Right? Right. right. Now after that, so once we have covered Basel, so in Basel we will cover the PDLGD and the EAD model. So my focus essentially would be on the retail portfolio. Right. However, for the commercial portfolio, I will be talking about some specific methods like the Pujo Tasha method that is used for low default portfolios and so on. So for commercial products, we'll have a separate discussion. But as far as the hands on are concerned, we would be having it on a retail data. We would be having it on a personal loans data because those data sets are the ones, you know, which would give you so which has substantial amount of default rates. Otherwise, if you do not have sufficient amount of default rates, it becomes a bit of a challenge to, to use uh, to develop those models initially. So, because it's a learner's process, we would start off with optional default rate cases, and then I'll talk about commercial portfolios where we'll talk about you know this uh, riskiness associated with the borrowers and so on. So that's you know precisely the way that we would have it. Right now, once I finish off the Basel side, once I finish off the regulatory side, therefore we would need to talk about the behavior scorecard and the application scorecard. Right? So from there we move on to talk about the BAU management. So the BAU risk management, so acquisition scorecard with uh, your customer management scorecards, and how is it that each of the scorecards are used for taking certain risk decisions, right? So, so first we start with Basel. We talk about PD, we talk about LGD, we talk about EAD, we talk about the model development, we talk about their downstream process, we see how capital is kept kept aside and how does the entire mechanism work. From there, we move to talk about how is it that this model is developed or how is this model is validated and so on. Each of the models are developed, validated, monitored, right? And finally, we talk about, or uh, so I try to pitch it. Uh, I try to bring CCAR into the framework as well. CCAR development and validation to some extent, right? But my key focus would be on the, uh, you know, the AIRB model developments, along with the most recent changes that has come in on Basel 3, Basel 4, like this. So Basel 4 is still outside scope because it's still not an implementation. Uh, we'll mostly Basel 2, which is followed as some cases. So that's the first part that we start off with. We cover the regulatory side first. 